transgender woman in Ohio, or I, said, I should say girl because uh, she was only 17 years old, committed suicide because she was bullied by her family members and also her classmates. This is 17-year-old Leela Alcorn, and uh, she apparently realized that she was basically a girl trapped in a boy's body as early as age four, but she didn't really understand it. And it wasn't until she got a little older that she realized that, hey, you know what? There is a, a, a way of describing what I'm going through. I'm actually transgendered. And unfortunately, her parents did not take kindly to what she realized about herself. They were actually pretty tough. So after she committed suicide by jumping in front of a semi-trailer, mm. um, people found her suicide letter on Tumblr. And I'm going to read you parts of it. And I do warn you, it's really devastating and difficult to read. Um, she said the following, there's no winning, there's no way out. I'm sad enough already. I don't need my life to get any worse. People say it gets better, but that isn't true in my case. It gets worse. Each day I get worse. This story is tragedy through and through. Of course, she didn't live long enough for it to get better. And so as you read the letter, uh, it just it breaks your heart. But Leela, not every community is like the one you grew up in. Not every family is that way. Not every set of friends is that way, right? So obviously it's too late for Leela, but she makes great points in the letter about how she doesn't want it to be too late for others. Yeah. That if you could have found communities and friends that would have stuck up for you. Now, I know that as you're living through this as a teenager, it's enormously difficult. And apparently you have to start the process if you want to make a transition the earlier the better, right? right? And when she asked for the transition at 16 on her 16th birthday, her parents said, no way. They were deeply Christian and they were apparently embarrassed of her. Oh, it breaks your heart. And they forced her to go to counseling, but it was usually religious counselors that shamed her and made her feel terrible about who she really was. And of course, that type of bullying from your own parents and from counselors that are supposed to help you will make you depressed. And she was suffering from severe depression as a result of this. So there are more parts of her letter that I do want to read to you guys because it gives you a better sense of what she went through, you know, the struggle that she had to deal with. She said, when I was 14, I learned what transgender meant and cried of happiness. After 10 years of confusion, I finally understood who I was. I immediately told my mom and she reacted extremely negatively, telling me that it was a phase that I would never truly be a girl, that God doesn't make mistakes, that I am wrong. Well, okay, then I would have, you know, she's in such a difficult situation there, she's 14. Well, if God doesn't make mistakes, he created me like this, then it's not a mistake, then you should help me, right? But no, 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 what will their friends think? I mean, they'll judge them, right? They'll think she's gay and, gay, and God is against that. So, but then there's all these gay people. You, the, these fundamentalist Christians, right? You all understand that there's gay people, right? You don't deny that reality. Mm -hmm. Well, then, did God make all of those mistakes? All right, and, and if transgender people, do you understand they exist in the world? Mm -hmm. So, so what, did God do it or didn't He do it? Make right. up your mind. Yeah, but the issue is they refuse to believe that people are born this way. They think that this is a lifestyle choice, which I think is the most ridiculous. First of all, even if it was a lifestyle choice, who cares? It's none of your business. Let people live their lives the way they want to live their lives. But for the vast majority of people, I would say all of them, it's not really a choice. It's something that they're born with. This is what their identity is, okay? So you can't go in there and, and change someone's identity because it's not in line with your religious doctrine. How many people, teenagers specifically, have committed suicide because they're gay and they've been bullied, because they're transgender and they've been killed, uh, bullied? How many transgendered individuals have been murdered by, by random people just because of who they are. I mean, how many people have to die for us to realize that this is wrong? And who would choose that? Like, you, you're yeah. from this Christian family. You think that at four years old, she decided, oh, I'm not a boy, I'm a girl. Uh, that's a lifestyle choice I'd like to make. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna put up with that for 10 years, not even understanding what the hell is going on. And at 14, I'm gonna announce to my parents, because that didn't take an enormous amount of courage to do that. It's just because oh, I feel like it. It's a lifestyle choice. Do you, remember, do you remember when you chose to be straight? Yeah. Yeah, me either. So yeah. it's just a ridiculous notion. Anyway, she continues to write, On my 16th birthday, when I didn't receive consent from my parents to start transitioning, I cried myself to sleep. So they took me out of public school, 
took away my laptop and phone and forbid me of getting any sort of social media, completely isolating me from my friends. This was probably the part of my life when I was the most depressed, and I'm surprised I didn't kill myself. I was completely alone for five months. No friends, no support, no love, just my parents' disappointment and the cruelty of loneliness. And then finally, they allowed him to get social media accounts, go back to his friends, and some of them decided that they just wanted to abandon him, right? And that was when the depression got worse and it got to the point where he felt the best thing was to take his own life. So final part of this that I want to read to you. I'm never going to transition successfully, even when I move out. I'm never going to be happy with the way I look or sound. I'm never going to have enough friends to satisfy me. I'm never going to have enough love to satisfy me. I'm never going to find a man who loves me. I'm never going to be happy. Either I live the rest of my life as a lonely man who wishes he were a woman, or I live my life as a lonelier woman who hates herself. There's no winning. Now, we think, of course, that that isn't true, that there are people who, of course, are happy later in life living uh, as transgendered. And we're heartbroken that she never got to see that because of the environment that she grew up in. So the part that Anna read about all she had, they took, they stripped her of everything so she couldn't communicate with the outside world. Mm -hmm. And she said, all I had was my uh, parents' disappointment and the cruelty of loneliness. Mm -hmm. Oh, that broke my heart. And then she said at one point in the letter, they felt like I was attacking their image, that I was an embarrassment to them. I can't imagine what that feels like. And so, look, this is her side of the story. And I'm sure the parents have a different perspective and we don't know what their perspective is, but it doesn't look good. And so the, her whole point in the letter was not to attack people in hindsight after she's passed away. She said throughout the letter, understand that this is what we go through. So don't do this to your kids. So if you're out there and you're reading this and, and your kid is going through this, understand our perspective and understand the pain that we're in and don't do that to us. Don't, don't shun us and send us to Christian therapy to try to change who we are and, and deny who we are just because you feel embarrassed around your Christian friends. Yeah. And, and is that what Jesus would have done? He would have broken people's spirit because he was embarrassed that they weren't going to be seen in the right way in the right circles? I mean, if you believe in Christianity, you believe on the decent parts of Christianity, it would seem to be the opposite of that message. But people get obsessed. They get obsessed with their little cliques and their groups and how they're going to be perceived. And they're even willing to do this to their daughters and to their kids just so they can feel a little better around their friends. It's yeah. Repulsive. What are your priorities? Are your priorities having a good image among your friends or loving your own family members? How do you <laughs> abandon your own children? because you don't agree with their lifestyle. I, I just don't get it, I don't know. I'm, I guess we're from a different world 